everyone. Happy Wednesday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. Hold on a sec here. I think I forgot to get the mic on. <laughs> Thank you for coming in tonight. Uh, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. And it's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour here. And I work on projects from beginning to end so you can see the whole uh, part of the process and you can stitch with me and uh, help me along the way while I experiment through this whole whole world here. Um, so, all right, you guys, we are continuing on the Splendid Sampler 2. We are working on the octopus block and we are well along our way. I think it looks so cute. I am so excited about it. So this is raw edge applique. We have fused our pieces down. So this used a fusible web to get all of these pieces down. And now we actually have to stitch it. And that is the part that's going to be a little experiment today. Um, I have not used, I'm going to try using this fatter thread, this thicker thread, which will give us some really cool outlines. I think it's a 12 weight thread, which is a little uh, thicker thread. And I have not used that on, on, um, on this new machine, this new old machine, my 1938 Kenmore machine, I've not used a thicker thread and I've not used a thicker needle as well. So we're gonna see what changing the needle out is like on this machine and we're gonna give it a few tests and hopefully it all works. Uh, Val, I don't know if she's here today, but she emailed me a good link on some tips on sewing with the 12 weight thread and we're gonna, we're gonna use some of those tips, um, the two, uh, main ones or three really we're gonna use a, a bigger needle so we're gonna use uh, a wider needle because it needs to accommodate that thicker thread we are going to loosen the top the top thread so that the bottom thread pulls it under a little bit more uh, kind of like how machine embroidery works machine embroidery you have a tight bobbin and that pulls the upper thread underneath um, a little bit more and we're gonna stitch real slow. <laughs> so apparently that might have been my mistake last time I tried this, just trying to stitch at normal speed because I was having a lot of skipped stitches and uh, in theory that uh, slow uh, stitching works a little better. So we have a whole lot we're gonna experiment with today, not to mention that we're working on a pretty intricate block for a lot of that stitching, but I think it'll be a really fun uh, We'll learn something, we'll practice some stuff, and we'll see, we'll see how we do tonight. Uh, so awesome, you guys. Uh, and uh, yes, I see a lot of you have ordered our, our kits on Amazon. Today is the last day of our Amazon kit sale. So I have four kits right now, the owl embroidery kit, the llama embroidery kit, the uh, a unicorn embroidery kit and the tyrannosaurus dino uh, embroidery kit. Those are all on sale. They're all 20% off on Amazon. And today is the last day, the last day of July, which is crazy town. We're like into August tomorrow. <laughs> uh, so that is happening. And also you guys, uh, Finish It Friday is coming up. So Finish It Friday is the first day of every, the first Friday of every new month. We stop what we're working on and we work on something else. And this week is going to be extra special. I'm going to um, be stitching one of my new designs that won't actually be released for like months yet. So I showed a picture of it in my email today and I'll show you it here as well. Uh, and I'm going to be taking down all the social media photos I post of it, and I'm going to be taking down the video of us stitching it on uh, Friday, just because, you know, it's still secret. <laughs> so you're just getting a little, some flashes of it. So keep, uh, keep an eye on your emails. There won't be one tomorrow, but Friday, be sure to check your emails. I am going to have this pattern. And I'll show you it right now. It is the shine bright, the diamond pattern. Uh, one of my new uh, kits that I'm releasing. So I'm releasing a bunch of cute little kits here. 
uh, you know, it's reverse here. So when we flip you around, I'll show it a little bit more. But we'll be stitching this up on Friday and I will have the pattern available on Friday as well. And it will be a PDF pattern. So if you're anywhere in the world, you'll be able to get it and print it and stitch it with us. And I'm also going to be having a special uh, kind of preliminary preview kit of it. So it won't be the actual final kit when we have it uh, made for real, but it will be a bunch of fun stuff and a, a few little extra things, a special preview of, of it just for you guys here. So that will be on Friday. So be sure to um, um, check it out then. And yes, <laughs> that's another thing, Noelle. Tomorrow is my husband's birthday, August 1st. Uh, so <laughs> it's it's his birthday in Australia right now, which is awesome. Uh, so uh, I cannot guarantee I'm going to be on tomorrow night. We don't have any plans yet, but I'm guessing we'll go out to dinner. <laughs> I don't know. So this might be the last evening of this until Friday. So that's why I wanted to just uh, tell you about that. It's a special finish at Friday and be sure to uh, check your, keep an eye on your emails. And I will post about um, the, when the pattern and stuff is available on Friday, I'll post about it on, on the Facebook page as well. So as long as you're keeping your eye on the emails and the Facebook on an Instagram on Friday, you won't miss it, but it is only Friday. I'm going to take everything offline um, after Friday for, for this kit. And it's again, the, the shine bright, I'll flip it around so you guys can see it a little bit better. But anyway, we are going to stitch this guy up tonight. The, the octopus block from the Splendid Sampler 2. So, all right, I'm going to flip you around. Sheesh, a lot going on <laughs> this, this week. But here, here is that kit. So it is a, a little bit smaller than my normal kits. I'm doing a few small kits uh, this time around. And this is the diamond kit. It's the Shine Bright. Uh, shine bright diamond kit. So uh, we will be stitching this on Friday and uh, I am hoping that we can do it from beginning to end the whole thing completely finished framed in the hoop uh, transferred. I'm hoping we can do all of that on Friday. So just a special warning that might be more than an hour. <laughs> so we might go over a little bit on Friday just to finish this up, but it is um, a quick and simple and easy project. There are only two stitches. There are, there's the back stitch and then the two little French knots there. So it should be just a quick, fun project. It's in this cute little four inch hoop. Um, I have a kind of a new way of finishing uh, my hoop that's just so easy and quick, just like this. And uh, I will show you all that on, on Friday. So, all right, you guys, that is that. Let's get going on, on here. So here is the octopus that we, we fused it all down last night. So now all we have to do yet is stitch it and then, you know, just trim it down. Um, so my, my hope is that we can use some of this thicker thread to, to stitch it. Um, to stitch it down. So what this will look like when we're done is kind of more of a like a almost a hand stitched back stitch look to it. So it will really outline this thing. I mean, it is going to be very, very visible. And what I was thinking is maybe the yellow for all the octopus stuff and then the the um, orange for all the coral stuff. Um, I don't know about the little um, bubbles yet. I don't know if we'll do that. Uh, I used, Kathy, I used the normal Steema Seam 2. So it has that number 2 in it. So I used Steema Seam 2, the regular. I have not purchased the light yet, but uh, Sue mentioned uh, in an email um, here that uh, I think on connected threads or connecting threads right now, I think um, they're having a sale on the Steema Seam 2 light. So I'm actually going to take a look at that after we're done tonight and um, see if I can snag some of the Steema Seam 2 light. So apparently that's the same thing where it has that sticky, the sticker aspect of the um, piece, but it is a lighter, um, like you could probably hand stitch through it. This is very difficult to hand stitch through. I tried doing that on a few blocks and ugh, it is not fun. I do not recommend it. All right, and I'm just noticing, I think this yellow might be wool. 
versus um, this cotton stuff. I don't know, it feels a little bit different and I'm wondering if that's why I'm having trouble with it. I've tried to use this thread before. Um, so I think let's try to maybe start with this easy one potentially and do this coral first. So uh, we have to, oh, the light doesn't seem to stick, stick as well. Oh, Kathy, that is good to know. Oh, and Leslie, Leslie Ann says that it does not stick as well either. Okay, well, I might get some just because I know we've talked about it and then we can do a little comparison on it. That would be maybe good uh, one of these days. So yeah, I will, I will purchase some and we'll do a little, we'll do a comparison on it. All right, you guys, we need to three thread this and I got to really pay attention because this is threaded and you know, it's, this is all relatively new to me. I mean, this, the whole system is on the side plate here. Uh, it's just kind of new to me. So let's, this is probably my third or fourth time ever threading uh, my machine here. So uh, it always makes me nervous. Like I'm gonna just not know how to do it. It should be relatively clear. Okay, so we're going through that little, the little tension. Okay, we got the little tension dealy right there. And then I believe we come back up around here. And then we're down at the pulley system. Okay, the tension, I'm feeling the tension. That's good. And I think that's it. Then I kind of go through, there's a little hole here. I'm gonna get you guys down, down a little further now. Oh, look how pretty that orange is on the, on the black. Um, so uh, I'm gonna switch the needle, Leslie. Uh, I'm going to switch to a 116 needle. I suspect that this is maybe an 8012 in here. I don't know. Um, uh, so let's let's just compare. But I want to use since I am using that thicker that thicker thread, I want to use a bigger needle. And the big the bigger needle part, what I really mean is the eye of the needle. Uh, if you use, let's see what this one looks like. Oh yeah, look at that look at that difference. Look how much smaller. I mean, it's subtle, but look how much smaller that hole is compared to this hole. Ooh, let's get in focus again here. There we go. Um, woo! Flung it across the room. Oh, thanks, Grace. I'll, I'll um, well, thanks for John. <laughs> I will, uh, I'll let him know you said uh, happy birthday. Um, but yeah, so this is a much smaller hole than this one. We need the bigger hole to accommodate the thicker thread. If we put this one in the smaller hole, it will scrape on the edges and uh, um, that will fray it much quicker and it will like inhibit it uh, going through um, the fabric or uh, through, the, through the needle. All right, so this is a kind of a side load thing. So on my, my other machine, I put the flat side of, you know, it has this flat side. I put that towards the back, but on this one, it goes to the right side. So that's a little, um, I think that's kind of common for these older machines, but not common for my brain. So that's, that'll be interesting. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna just snip, snip this edge so I have a nice clean edge because I gotta thread it through this little area here. And then I gotta attempt to get it through uh, this needle, which is always a bear. Oh, maybe I got it on the first try. Ah, ha <laughs> ha. Okay, the bigger eye really helped there. So I'm not gonna change the bottom thread. I want a thinner, a thinner bottom thread here. Cause uh, it's just, uh, I tried it with a thicker thread once and the, it's just too thick for the bobbin. The bobbin just can't, can't deal with it. Um, the last thing I'm gonna do is, here's my tension. So my tension dial is so cool on this machine. Look, loose, tight. <laughs> That's that's all there is to it. So um, let's see. So right now it is on. I don't know. It's kind of centered. Or let's 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 think of it from the top. So it is in between the one and the two. If I'm looking at it right at the top. So if we want to go looser. Oh gosh, we are already pretty loose. Gosh, let's just go all the way up. So I'm as loose as it goes right now. <laughs> all right. So let's. Let's see how, how this works. Let's just give it a try. Um, I did stick a few little scrap pieces down 
Um, this has just a few little squiggles on here, just some thick and some just thin to see how it works, um, just on different thicknesses. And then here's just another extra piece where I have two pieces together. Uh, let's, let's use that one first. You think the eye of the needle always points toward the bobbin? Oh, that's interesting. Um, oh, that is interesting. So Pamela, I never thought about that before, but yeah. So the she, Pam says that the Pamela says that the eye of the needle, you know, this is side loaded, or like I put this this on the side, but my bobbin is side loaded here. So it makes sense that it's on the, the eye is on the side versus my other machine, it, the eye is in front, but I front load the bobbin there. So that is interesting. Never, never knew that, but it makes total sense, uh, Pamela. All right, let's just give this a test. So I'm gonna go slow because that's, that's what, what I've heard. I have it threaded with a bigger needle and on looser tension. Let's, let's just see, see how it goes here. Oops. <laughs> First of all, I gotta put my, I always, um, I've been putting this piece of fabric to, so that the motor wheel, that motor pulley doesn't get squished. And I always forget about it. All right, let's go slow. And you know what? I think we should probably make our stitches a little bigger too. So it almost looks like, um, yeah, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make the stitches bigger. Uh, just so it looks more like hand embroidery almost. Ooh, wow. Ooh, it's hard to, it's hard to go slow. <laughs> I'm going to be just tapping my wheel a little bit this whole time, I think. All right, let's see how that works. Pat says that today you're told that the groove of the needle faces away from the bobbin. Ooh, I will have to look at the groove. Yeah, because there is a little groove on the needle. All right, so far this is looking super awesome. Like I want to just jump right in. All right, so yeah, so I did a little wider stitch. You can see I didn't start out as wide, so those stitches are a little bit smaller, but here, I mean, it really looks like someone hand backstitched that, doesn't it? Oh, that's gonna look so cool. So what about the back? Ooh, see, now here, here's my worry. So this is, it was getting kind of, stuck in there. So this is kind of what was happening um, last time. It seems actually pretty well secure though. Um, you'll see that the bobbin is pretty tight, that it is pulling these threads from the front down. That is, that's kind of what we want when we're, we have the thick, the thick um, thread on top. This worries me a little bit here, but I feel like this is one of those situations that we just Gotta get, gotta try and see see what happens with it. Um, so I don't know. I think we're gonna just jump right in. I'm kind of just stoked. I want to just get going on this. So let's um, let's start with this coral. So let's go down on this. Let's uh, go around this coral. Gosh, maybe I should start right here. It's a little more flowy. This one's pretty bumpy. I could do this little bit of the coral and then stop and then, then pull it off the machine and then attempt this kind of bouncy coral. Um, and then there's a little blip right there. I think, I think let's give that a try. And then there's a little bit down there. We're gonna have a lot of threads that will pull towards the back when we're done. So that'll be its own little process. But I just wanna start, let's, let's just get going. All right, so again, I'm gonna go slow. See how it goes. One tip from sewing class 50 years ago, lower the needle into the fabric by hand. Oh, to start, oh, that's a good idea. I'll do that the next time, um, next time I start. All right. <laughs> you know, my stitches are bigger, so it gets done faster and I gotta like, I gotta lift the foot up a little to pivot. So I just wanna stitch a little to the inside of my piece and you can stitch, you can stitch in a different spot than that really. 
but I, I like kind of like the just the barely outlined look. Okay, so that's that's my last stitch. I'm gonna pull off the machine. We're gonna have a lot of threads hanging everywhere, but that's okay. We'll tuck them in when we're done. All right, but there we go. Man, it almost, it totally looks like we hand stitched that on, kind of. All right, so it is still getting some bloops up here. You know, I'm not a bajillion percent worried about that because we are going to quilt this whole thing yet, right? So if I just treat this as I need to hold down this fabric enough so it stays, but I'm going to be quilting this whole thing yet somehow, and I might go into it to quilt. Who knows, uh, right? Um, so I think whatever we get, even if it has a few little bloops like this, I think we're still going to be okay as far as it, you know, surviving, <laughs> surviving washing. All right, so I'm, and actually while I'm here, I'm going to tug on the back. And you can see the um, thread is coming up. I'm going to just grab my stiletto or a, or a pin or something, and I'm going to pull that thread to the back. And I'm going to do that over here as well. Actually, you know what? Maybe we'll just do this as we go. Uh, so one thing I've been doing lately is on these appliques, I've been tying off the threads to the back instead of instead of like back tacking where you just go like a you go forward and then backwards for a stitch and then forward again because you can see that on the front and it's pretty bulky so instead I've been pulling the threads to the back and just tying like a little square knot and then snipping it snipping the edge or snipping um the knot a little bit um and I think it gets, just gives it a nice finished look on the front so I think I think we'll just do that as we go here. It's a kind of annoying extra little step, but especially with this big fat thread, it does make it look really pretty from the front. And I feel like it's a little secure because it's got that knot there. Uh, the bloops are just loose. They are not, they're not broken. So no, it, it, it's fine. It's just a little, a little looser on that one. So I don't know. But there we go. So that's with the thread pulled to the back. Then it just looks like some nice, some nice stitching. But here, this is, um, you can see right here, you can see a little bit of the back bobbin thread coming out here. That's why we want the top thread super loose. That's why we put it on looser so that the bottom pulls, like we can pull it a little bit. So it pulls that stitch. We want to pull these stitches to the back so we don't see, so we don't see any of that other thread from the front. See, so it looks, it looks really good all along here. And then you, then you see that one little bit right there. Probably just poke that to the back. <laughs> We're getting pretty, pretty crazy doing that, but there we go. <laughs> uh, all right, let's just keep going, see how we do. Uh, I'm gonna go around this bloopy deal here, and then we'll get this last little bloop from this, this piece here, and then we'll have to take it off and then do this last little bit here. All right, let's do it. So I can tell already that there's no way we are getting this done today. This is just a slow, uh, just take your time sort of ordeal. But so far, it seems to be working with this thread. Okay, so I'm gonna use my, my, uh, oh, I think I gotta go forward there. I'm using the hand wheel to get it started. Wow, I'm so like paranoid of going too fast. And this one has just a lot of little loops. So this is gonna be me just turning the, um, lifting up and turning the whole time for these little loops. Oh, see there, I think we skipped a little stitch. 
Yeah, I don't know. We'll just see how this goes. I think we're just going to deal with however this ends up. I think we'll get the effect still. What if you tried sewing on the normal settings? Old machine would have used chunky threads. Um, we can try that. So all that would mean is that stitch on a little less loose. Yeah, and we could try that. Let's do like this one half and half. I'll do to here on the looser stitch. And then I, I'll go to where we were earlier. It's still looking cute. All right, now, now I'll switch to the a little bit tighter. I was at like one and a half with the, so I'm about at the same looseness. So I think my thread was pretty loose to start out with. So we'll, we'll see if we see a difference here. I went a little tighter on the thread. And yeah, maybe, maybe that will do the trick. Can you hear my pedal squeak? I'm just like barely kind of tapping it just to go slow on these little bits. I don't have very good control over the pedal yet. I'm okay with this looking a little choppy too, just because, um, you know, it is raw edge applique. It kind of goes with the rough edge because, uh, you know, as we watch this, it's going to get like rougher and rougher, which is kind of the look. It's kind of like a nice, um, oh, not homegrown. What is that look, that style of stitching? I can't think of it right now. Um, all right. Anyway, let's lift up. see how we did here. Okay, so I think I, oh yeah, right there I skipped a stitch. So that's, that's something. I mean, you know, you can see that really well, that hole, but that will, you won't be able to see that, you know, after it goes through the wash. So that, that's not so bad. And, but that's the only one we skipped. And about right here is where I changed the um, thread tension. So let's see, I think you know, I changed the tension and look, you can see it. You can see these, these little bobbin pieces. You can see them popping up there. So sorry, I tapped the thing. So, um, I don't know. The looser looks better on the front, even though, you know, that's nothing to care too much about just these little bits, but let's, let's check the back. Yeah. So here's, here's where they, I skipped the stitch. So, oh gosh. And where we started is a pretty big bloop too. Um, so uh, right here is where I changed the tension. So this tension actually looks much better. I'm gonna kind of half the difference. I'm surprised that there was that much difference between how I changed the tension because look, here's here's where I went. So we were up, um, I was all the way up to the top and I went just down to like one and a half. So I'll, I'll split the difference. Let's go, let's go to just the one. So I split it and, and we'll see if that, that works. Okay. Um, let's pull, pull the threads back again. So this one again is already kind of pulled back a little bit. Oops. There we go. So you guys can see, and I'm going to tie that in a knot. I think this will hold. There's so many little stitches that, you know, if most of them will hold it, they'll hold. And it's not like we're going to be super abrasive on this just one block. I mean, yeah, we'll go through the wash a bunch of times, but I think we'll be okay. The t intention is to use it as a, a usable quilt. I like, uh, I like functional art stuff. <laughs> so the fact that this can be used as a real quilt is, you know, what I like about it. Oh, use this knot and it holds, holds them good. That's, that's good to know, um, Kathy. Yeah, I just like the look of pulling it, pulling it to the back. 
All right. You know, this is um, pretty organic looking, just like how this coral would be. So I, I actually kind of like that. Oh, you know what? I forgot I was going to add this little bloop in. Ugh, now I got to go back and do that little bloop. Fine, we'll do it. Oh, what a pain just to go bloop bloop. Oh, well, let's do it. Let's be perfectionists here tonight. All right. Get this under the needle so I'm not pulling um, on the needle. So I'm actually going to try and go in this exact hole where I just was. I don't know if that worked as... Oops, get that underneath again. I don't know if you guys know, but um, just a good thing to be in the habit of is when you have your thread loose like this, make sure it goes underneath underneath your foot before you start tugging on the thread because otherwise you're tugging on the needle and look look like the needles moving and stuff that's that's not great for the needle. Uh, so if you put it underneath your foot and then tug on it, then the pressure is on the foot. It's not on the needle. All right, there we go. Back down. So I'm going to do, ooh, I'm going to do this little bloop. We'll go like one more maybe. All right, and now I'm wrapping around and doing this first piece's little bloop. There we go. <laughs> so I just had to sew that much because I forgot to do it the last time. Uh, scissors over here. So, I mean, I could keep sewing before um, tying all these knots, but all this thread is going to get in the way real quick if I don't take care of it right away. So. We're going to deal with this extra step of tying it off, but I think it's going to be worth it in the end. Just like I think it's going to be worth using this 12 weight thread. It's just, it's a, it's a neat extra detail. And this um, block is full of just fun details. And I think by just outlining it in this thick thread, that's just going to accentuate a lot of that. And, and I'm excited for that. But I think that that larger needle so far, you know, that seems to be working, working well. Like I, I don't see any fuzz happening and it's not like I don't like hear a little scraping noise or anything like that. So I think I think the needle is good to go. Oh yeah, and I know it was asked the other day. Unfortunately for the Amazon sale, uh, you know, it ends today, but I don't think it applies to Amazon, um, uh, Amazon.ca, which is Canada, uh, it, or it's just for the US only. There is, I did see a vendor that was selling it on um, Amazon.ca, uh, but that one is not coming direct from me. So they have acquired, whoever is selling that has acquired it. I mean, ultimately it, it originates from me, but I don't know if they've, you know, it looks like it's m maybe opened and that sort of stuff. I, I don't know. It might be perfectly fine, but uh, it that one's not coming direct from me. If you buy from... Um, uh, the US Amazon and you get it like direct from Amazon that's actually coming from me and if it says you can buy from these sellers if you click on that button if it says penguin and fish then then that's me as well there are some other sellers that sell it but it, it should say once you click into the sellers area um, or like sold by these sellers if if it doesn't just say buy and it says that buy from the sellers then you'll see penguin fish listed there as a seller and that and that's me uh, i'm tracy i'm still using my 50 weight orophil uh cotton thread for the bobbin so i have only changed the top thread 
um, I've only changed the top thread to the thicker thread. The, the bottom thread is still that 50 weight thinner thread. I kind of like thinking about this a little bit like machine embroidery. So machine embroidery uses a very thin bobbin thread uh, with a very loose tension on top. So that bobbin thread can pull all those front threads to the back. Uh, and that's, I feel like that's kind of the attempt here. Oh, you know what? I forgot we, we changed that, uh, we changed that tension. I haven't checked to see how that looks. Um, let's, let's take a look at that on the front again. Cause remember I, I, I wasn't at our normal tension and I put it all the way at loose and then I, I, I changed it to right in the middle. So, um, like I'm right on the number one versus like, I don't know, zero or 0 0.5 or something. And, and two, which is where I was, or maybe I was at one and a half. Oh yeah, I was at one and a half. Okay. So, all right. So here is that in the middle tension and that looks great. I don't see any of the front thread there. And actually the tension is looking pretty good on the back as well. So I think we've, we found the sweet spot for tension. So that's super good news. I'm very happy about that. All right, let's try and work our way through this crazy coral. So I am going to probably start and stop every time I hit one of these, um, you know, octopus tentacles. So let's maybe start here. Then we can get a little bit. The only goofy thing well, yeah, let's, let's start, let's start here and then we'll do this whole bit. Yeah. And then, you know, just cause I like having the edge to my right, that just feels more normal to me. So, all right, we'll, we'll get this part and then we'll have to come back and do, do this, these other things. I know I should, I should have took a photo, um, Bonnie, I'm just gonna have to remember, you know what? I might mark it actually with a piece of tape. Actually, I'm going to just take this piece of tape right here. Ugh, no, I'm not. That's not coming off. This is supposed to be that easy to tear tape. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to that flat edge. I'm going to just put on the one and a half. So I remember that that is, that's my normal spot. <laughs> there we go. That, that'll, that'll work, right? That, that'll get the job done. All right, let's do that bit of the coral. Ooh, there's a lot going on with this coral. This will be interesting. All right, we'll start here. Get that scissors out of the way. You know, we really could go in into this and draw, you know, we wouldn't just have to outline. We could draw like a bunch of fun things happening in here. Um, you know, we could do that with the, the octopus a little bit. We talked about that a little bit, like having, seeing part of the so legs and stuff. I don't know, maybe with this coral, we'll just stick to the outlines though. Sorry, a lot happening with the coral. All right, going up this way. Nope, I did not change the bobbin thread. The bobbin thread is still that 50 weight and that seems to be working just fine. Oh, you guys, I am so excited to stitch that diamond pattern. Um, I hope some of you join me and stitch it, stitch it on Friday. So, uh, you know, I, I mentioned that I, I'm not going to put that video, I'm not going to put the video of us stitching it on Friday onto YouTube, but I'm probably going to take the video off of Facebook right away as well, just because, you know, it is, it's a pattern that's coming a lot later, so I didn't really want to introduce it yet, but I just couldn't, I couldn't handle it anymore. I wanted to stitch it up uh, with you guys. Um, so those videos will be coming down, but I will... Uh, if you get the, if you get the PDF of the pattern or the, the kit of the pattern, I'll, 
I'll um, send you a link. I'll, I'll post the video privately so no one can see it, but I'll send you the link. Uh, especially if you get the, I mean, you know, if you get the pattern or the kit, but especially the kit because you might not be stitching it right away. Um, what fabric do you need for the diamond? I am just gonna use a white muslin fabric. Uh, you, if you have just like a white cotton fabric like that, that would work fine. Um, even if you had um, a color fabric, that would be really kind of fun to see what that would look like with the diamond. Um, I, but yeah, I'm using like a white kind of muslin fabric. And, and it's like a six inch square of fabric. So you're not gonna need anything bigger than that really. Uh, well, it depends on what hoop you're using. So I'm gonna use a four inch hoop. If you have a larger hoop, you might wanna start out with a larger piece of fabric just cause it's easier to have a, a big piece of fabric in there when you stitch. Oh, you've been trying to get the PDF? I don't have the, so the PDF is not, is not available yet, Nolene. So, so I'm talking about the the diamond, that diamond um, here. We sh I showed it to you a little bit later or earlier. This is what we're gonna stitch for the um, for finish it Friday on Friday. I wanna I wanna I wanna trace it, stitch the whole thing, and put it in the hoop. I wanna try and do that all on Friday. Um, but I don't have the pattern released yet. So the so uh, if you're trying to click on something or whatever, it is it's not actually live yet. It is not going to be available until Friday. So it'll be available bright and early on Friday though. Uh, so uh, it actually may be up late Thursday night. Probably before I go to bed, I'll I'll put it up. <laughs> uh, so. Um, that that's when it will go live. So then just uh, if you have sometime during the day, if you print it out, then then you'll be good. I did not use variegated floss, Gina. However, that would look amazing. <laughs> A variegated floss with this would look really cute. So uh, another thing, if you do, if you do want to stitch it with me, obviously the kit won't be to you yet. The kit will have all the colors here. So um, later you'll be able to stitch it. But, um, and I talk about, I'm going to talk about this in the, um, on Friday, I have an email going out about it and I'll tell you a little bit more, but you just, uh, I'll, I'll list the, um, or in the pattern will list, the PDF pattern will list the colors needed. But if you are using stuff from your stash, all you need is like three different blues. There's like this bright blue, this kind of middle blue and this light blue. And then there is like a light purple. So three blues, a light purple, and then two bright colors that you want for like the shininess of it. Uh, and I'm using I'm using yellow and yellow and orange. So yes, Friday in the AM. It, this is only going to be available Friday and um, no other day. Like I'm going to take it down at the end of the day. Like after we do after we do the live video. It's all coming down because it's sort of a secret yet. I don't want it. I don't want it circulated too too much yet because it's going to be a few few months. So yeah. So there'll be two things. There'll be the pattern. So that will be available just as a PDF download. You know, if you have all the supplies and everything already. And then I'm also going to have kind of a special preview kit. It's going to be a kit with a few extra little bonuses. Uh, that you won't get in when it comes out for real and uh, it'll it won't be in the same packaging or anything as when it comes out for real either uh, it'll be just like a special special like you know preview kit a little bit different than the real kit so that will be available as well and how that's gonna work is you'll you'll still get the PDF right away so you're you're either way if you just get the pattern or if you get the kit you're gonna immediately get the PDF uh, that's the pattern. And uh, then uh, uh, after that, you'll get the kit, the, re the rest of the supplies and the bonuses sent to you after. But you'll you'll immediately have the pattern. So if you want the kit, you'll still, uh, still get the pattern if you want to start stitching right away. 
Where do you buy painter's tape? You can just get it at, I mean, really you could get it at, I think Target has an aisle of tape where you can get painter's tape. Uh, you know, a painting, a painting store, like a paint store or like a Home Depot or a Menards would all have painter's tape. Uh, it, there's like green tape and blue tape. Either of that would be be good. I mean, go to any one of those department type stores, hardware stores, and ask for painter's tape, and the people will know exactly what you're talking about. They'll be able to guide you to the right spot. The beauty of it is it is it comes up really easily. It sticks really well, and it comes up without damaging anything. At least that's the theory. So, <laughs> um, so it's nice. And actually, I need some more too. This was the last from from the spool. Actually, here's I only have I have this much left of <laughs> my painter's tape here. Poor guy, I'm gonna need more of that. Oh, and I use it for quilting and stuff too, so I am gonna need more. Oh, that looks cute. All right, coral is coming along here. Um, let's get this big line of it here, see how we do. Oh yeah, Walmart would have it, just any, anywhere paint is sold. Uh, it's actually, it's pretty a, a common tool that people like using for a lot of different things, so. Um, if you're at a store that sells a lot of random stuff, chances are they'll probably have painter's tape too. If not, it's a thing that people know about, so um, they'll be able to know if they have it or not right off the bat. Like they're not gonna be confused when you say painter's tape, so that's, at least that's, you know, in theory, <laughs> you never know, right? I gotta put that on my shopping list though, because I was just at Target and I should have got some then. All right, we're gonna squeeze in here past this leg. There's barely any there. I don't wanna hit the leg, because that'll be in yellow. I hope that, oops, I went a little high there, oh well. I hope, um, I hope the tension of this is the same as what we can use for the, the uh, yellow when we do the octopus. All right, I'm gonna just kinda go so it looks like it's gonna connect here, but the octopus leg got in the way, and there we go. That is that. Oh, Aussies call it masking tape. So we do actually have a thing called masking tape that is a little different here. Um, masking tape here is typically brown and it leaves a little more residue uh, than, than this. This shouldn't leave any, any residue at all. Ooh, it's looking good. This is looking so cute. I am so happy with this, uh, with, uh, this 12 weight thread. I can't wait to do the octopus. I thought we'd start with this coral just because I think this particular thread will be a little bit easier and I thought it would be a, like a good, a less uh, conspicuous um, uh, place to play around while we learn the ropes a little bit. versus like the front and center octopus. So again, I am not positive that I will be here tomorrow. <laughs> it is John's birthday, my husband's birthday, uh, birthday tomorrow. Uh, so we may be uh, getting, getting um, beer at a brewery somewhere or some pizza somewhere, who knows? So I may not be here tomorrow night. Um, but if I am, <laughs> we'll be continuing on, on uh, all this stuff. I want to try and see if I can finish this coral tonight. I know our time is, is running out here and we got a lot of start and stop areas. Like I got a lot of little blips here. I got this little thing, boop, boop, and choop, right there too. So well, I guess we'll just keep going in order. I think... Since this leg is close to the edge, oops, let's get this underneath again. I'm 
gonna go up alongside it with the coral, with this orange. That was the bottom thread. I wanna make sure that I'm holding down the bobbin thread and the top thread so it's, ugh, let's just assume we are. So it doesn't get sucked back into the machine. Oh, I think I have to, eh, I don't want to stop. I'm just going to make one little stitch this way, even though it'll, I don't know, whatever. I want it to look like the legs are going in front of the coral. Rotor, are you sewing by the number of the piece? Nope, I am not. I am not sewing at all by the number of the pieces right now. Uh, right now I'm just kind of sewing, uh, I'm just sewing the coral and I guess I didn't make any real decision on the order. I did this one first just because it was the easiest sort of path, just a little arch. And then I did this one because we had to work at it a little bit more and then this one seemed like the hardest so I'm doing that one last. <laughs> that, that was my reasoning here. So we'll have to, I mean, there's a lot more going on with that octopus, so we'll have to figure that out uh, either tomorrow or Monday. We'll work that out a little bit. Do you not need to sew across the bottom of the coral? I'm not going to sew across the bottom because that's actually going to be cut off. It's going to be sewn into the quilt. So I remember I started with a much bigger square than what we're gonna end up with. So I think I cut a seven and a half inch square and we're gonna end up with a six and a half inch square. So all, all these side parts are actually going off the edge. Uh, and, and I don't need to protect that with stitching because it's gonna be stitched onto the like sashing piece that's next to it. So it'll have like real stitching on it. So I don't, I don't need to add it. I don't need to add any decorative um, stitching there. And, and yeah, I, I don't need to hold this down because um, I'm gonna hold it down with the real thing. And actually that makes me think I'm probably gonna actually chop some of these stitches off. So that's not very safe for those stitches. I should have maybe, hmm. Well, we'll see just what happens. Uh, what's going on in my head is that I should have maybe drawn the six and a half inch square on here and then started all of these decorative stitches on the inside of the square because if I cut through this then I'm going to cut off my knot and I'm going to cut off my stitching a little bit there too um which probably isn't the end of the world uh, I just need to not have it all fray away before I sew it into a quilt or sew it and sew like the sashing on you know so that's one of the reasons why I probably won't trim this down till right when I'm ready to sew it into the block of four, right? So this is the first new one. All my other ones are sewn in blocks of four now. So I won't, I won't probably trim this off to later. I could draw it now. That's probably not a bad idea. I think, yeah, you know what? I'm kind of, um, we just have a little bit of the orange to do. I'll do that on Monday, I think. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see if I'm here tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow or Monday. Uh, finish that orange and then we'll switch to the yellow thread. But you know what? I think that's not a bad idea. Let's, let's just trace this quick. Let me find my, ugh, here's my six and a half inch ruler here. And we kind of want it centered, right? I was kind of looking at the design a little bit. Wow, we're actually, well, keep in mind too that we're gonna lose a quarter inch everywhere. So I don't think I wanna lose that coral edge. That's kind of cute over there. Oh, I don't really wanna use octopus though either. Um, let's go, I don't know, maybe right there. Remember, like I'm looking at that quarter inch mark. I don't wanna cut off too much with the quarter inch. And I'm looking at the original design too. So this will get cut off a little. Yeah, this is, this is, uh, I think this is what we're going to do right here. So I'm just going to quick, just, this is just a guide. I'm not going to, I'm not going to assume this is perfect, but this will, I think, help 
know where to start and stop a little bit. And it looks like I haven't really cut. I, I mean, I maybe, maybe I'm cutting into this little stitch here, but maybe we just edge it over a little bit. But yeah, that's good. So what I, what I was wanting is I didn't want my stitching to cross over this because then I, then I would cut it off, right? So it looks like we're good to go yet. Um, so good. That was, that was smart. And actually I can't really see my line up here. I'm just going to rough it in again a little bit, a little bit more. doesn't really matter up at the top there, but ooh, it is coming together though. But look at the fun texture that added here. I think that's really just kind of neat. And we could, you know, we really could add in, you know, more swirls and stuff to here if we want, but I think, I think we're kind of okay. We could always go back and let's just draw some on. I'm just, Ugh, I don't want to ruin it either. But like some of these bloops, like we could bloop this down like this or something, you know? I mean, like there's there's opportunity to play a little bit here. Oh man, now I want to do it all. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe maybe I'll add some extra little bloops. We'll see. Uh, but I think especially with the octopus, we'll probably add um, a little bit more you know like I said like here for example this leg we're gonna want you know if this leg is coming in front we're gonna want to make sure that we stitch along there like that right because then this will look like it's coming out ahead of it and you know some of these legs we might want to come up a little bit more and we'll just play around with it but so we'll just maybe draw a little bit uh, a little bit before we we do that okay um, uh, oh, what did you check? What's out of stock? Uh, all right, I'm going to uh, flip you guys around and we'll take a look at this. And then I probably, like I said, I probably won't be back. Now that I think of it, I probably won't be back till Friday since it is John's birthday tomorrow. All right, <laughs> so let me show you this again here. All right, here we are. I think that's just going to add just that little bit of extra texture. And I think especially once we get going with the, the octopus, we'll get a, a lot of extra stuff going. Like you'll see the arm come down into here. Uh, you'll see it wrap around things a little bit better. We'll get a general outline a little bit better. I think, I think it's just going to stand out a little bit more. Like even that coral. Look at that coral from far away. That, that just pops a little bit more with that, with that colored outline. Uh, just as subtle, but it it does the job of of just ha adding a little bit more contrast there. So awesome! We'll get going on this. Like I said, either tomorrow, although that's a question mark because that's my husband's birthday. So I think you know, err on the side that I probably won't be here tomorrow. Uh, and then Friday is finish it Friday, first Friday of August. Which can you even believe it? It's August. Uh, tomorrow is August. But yeah, so on Friday, we'll be working on this shine bright, this diamond. Uh, it's one of my new uh, kits. It's, it's going to be one of my new kits several months from now. This is kind of like a little preview stitch along um, of it. The, I will have a pattern and the kit, a preview kit available, but it will not be available till Friday. So be sure to check your emails on Friday. And I know not everyone is getting the emails like it's not working for everyone and unfortunately that's an email server sort of thing that I can't do much about um, things are just going to spam probably um, so I will put a little announcement I will put a little announcement in the penguin and fish crafters group as well so I'll let you know there when when it's live or I'll put links to the pattern when it's on there so you don't miss out uh, so the pattern up for the pattern and the kit so anyway, that is, um, that won't be available till Friday. So don't look for it now. <laughs> uh, but that's awesome. And you know, yeah, and our Friday is a little earlier than Australia's Friday. So, all right, um, Leslie, I'm going to look at it a little bit more. Uh, a lot of times it just says bounced on my end. And what that means is that the server that it's going to just doesn't like it. And uh, there's not much I can do on my end, which is a huge bummer. So I'm not quite sure what to do about that, but I'll, I'll look into it again, Leslie. All right, you guys, thanks again. Chances are I'll see you Friday for Finish Up Friday. So have a good evening. Good night. <laughs>